This is Luke Radowski here reporting on yet another incident of the suppression of the free press. This time, it's of a U.S. Senator trying to get a journalist fired for asking him tough questions. I'm joined by the one and only Abby Marin of MediaRoots.org and RT. Now, if you remember, myself and Abby Marin collaborated together on questioning U.S. Senator Rand Paul on his endorsement of Goldman Sachs Bilderberg puppet Mitt Romney for the 2012 elections. Hey, Senator Paul. My name is Luke of We Are Change. We had an interesting conversation before about the Bilderberg Group, and knowing what you know, uh, how can you support Mitt Romney when The Guardian reported he was at the Bilderberg meeting? Hey, Rand. Uh, Abby Martin from Media Roots. I just wanted to ask you one quick question. Um, you know, your endorsement for Mitt Romney. People have a lot of questions about it. Now, the video was a really big hit online, but the most interesting part of the story happened after the video was already up. Abby, can you tell us exactly what happened to you after that video went online? After that week passed, the next week, I went into the studios, went into RT America, and my boss said, you know, come in to our office. Uh, we need to talk to you. And they just said, you know, what did you do last week, and why are we getting threatening phone calls from the Capitol Police and also the Senate Media Relations Committee um, at the Capitol building, and I just told them exactly what happened. I showed them the video. Um, I said that we, I was, it was totally unaffiliated with RT America, and they said that this guy was calling them, saying they're going to send the Capitol Police down there to arrest me, um, threatening to strip not only me of my press credentials but everyone at the station of their press credentials. This is just for asking a question, asking U.S. Senator Rand Paul. And, and can, can you tell us who these phone calls came from and where they originated? They were originated from the Senate Media Relations Committee. I'm not going to say the guy's name because I don't, I, I don't know, it was Mike something, I forget his last name, but he oversees that entire committee and so he was calling to threaten me um, on behalf of him coming from directly from the senator. So this was confirmed to me later, and I'll tell you what happened after that. Um, I actually had to go meet with them in, in the Capitol building, and it was really intense and intimidating experience. But um, So, yeah, they, they called RT America, were threatening to arrest me, um, threatening to strip me of my press credentials and the entire office. So once I explained to my boss and producers what exactly happened, they were just like, doesn't sound like you did anything wrong. Um, I, if I were you, I would definitely get a lawyer or, or just meet with him because he kept following up saying that he wanted to meet me so he can hear my side of the story. And I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know if I should get like a lawyer involved. Um, and so finally I just wrote him back and I said, all right, I'll meet with you. So I had to go to the Capitol building and meet with this guy in a small room, like an interrogation room. And it wasn't just him. It was the bureau chief of Al Jazeera, the bureau chief of CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. All these bureau chief heads sat at a table um, and just basically confronted me about what had happened and wanted to get my side of the story. They said, you know, did you sneak Luke in? Like, how did you get in there? And I was just like, no, we were registered independent press. All we did was go through the metal detector and just go in the Capitol building. I mean, no one even checked our, no one even checked. It was like so lax. I mean, you remember what happened. We walked in there. We even told the woman at the front desk, we're here for this press event down, down the way. And she was just like, just go ahead. So, I mean, I mean well, they weren't that lax when they found my cookies and, and, and water and, and all the <laughs> snacks I had in my book bag and maybe throw everything out, which made me a little bit mad. But people also need to know we were registered press inside the Senate building. Uh, we hold different press credentials because, Abby, you have a Senate uh, press pass. I have different press passes that I won't mention or name, but I do have that magic piece of laminated piece of paper that grants me some uh, uh, access and leeway to get into different places. But it, we were registered for an event inside the Senate building. Nobody sneaked in. We walked in through security. We were walking towards the event. We saw Rand Paul and we asked him a question. There's no other way to go around it. We have to ask these guys serious questions. The mainstream media doesn't do it. And these people came at you with full litigious might, verbal and uh, email jujitsu, trying to attack you and scare you and intimidate you for simply asking the question. I mean, it's, I mean, it must have been a very scary feeling because I remember you telling me they were very vague in the beginning about what they were going to do. They threw out all these options, possible jail, possible losing your credentials, possibly hurting all, the entire RT office. And just because they didn't pick on me shows you that they were looking for any reason to respond. Any reason to try to intimidate and harass and they found a reason it was because you were working for RT. 
and that's the only reason they did this. It wasn't a threat. It wasn't nothing serious. They did it just to intimidate and scare you. It was very scary. It was very, very scary. I mean, I, I know I was in contact with you the whole time saying, what should I do? Should I come out with the story? The story's huge. I mean, Rand Paul is trying to get me stripped of my press credentials for what happened. I mean, that is insane. And fired or arrested for simply asking yeah. him a question. Yeah, and, and I, I remember telling my boss, I was just like, have him come arrest me. I mean, this is outrageous. This is, this is completely unfounded. And, and as we know now, there was no charge that they could really do. Uh, it was totally baseless. It was completely empty threats, very underhanded intimidation tactics against journalism. Um, you know, D.C. is just really scary like that. Like, I, I, I just had no idea that that would happen for what we did. I mean, if we went up to Rand Paul and we were just like, hey, man, we really like you. Thank you for what you do. I mean, just the fact that we asked him something he didn't like, he ran away like a coward um, with his head down, uh, didn't want to answer the questions. He was having a public press event in that room, um, and we were there, registered. I was registered under Media Roots to ask him questions. I mean, that's why we were there. That's why he was having a public press event there. We were for the Freedom Freedom Conference, and that's why we went there. So, yeah, it was just really, really intense, really scary, intimidating and, you know, at this point, I'm just going to come out with the story because I think people need to know who still think that Rand Paul somehow, you know, has to make deals for him to play the long game so he can, you know, do good things later. No, I mean, he's sold out. Like, he's a sellout to the Republican establishment, and he's underhandedly trying to intimidate journalists who confront him about the selling out. This is a U.S. representative. This is a representative of the people trying to arrest and fire a journalist for asking questions. I mean, the story is huge. I mean, it's unprecedented. Uh, I, I never, I mean, I work the Senate beat, a beat many times and I go out to the Senate building and I ask all these hard questions to all these senators and I had never experienced or I never went through something that you went through. And, and it's pretty insane to have uh, Rand Paul, Mr. Libertarian himself, <laughs> use the full might of, of any rules and regulations that he could throw at you, throw at you to try to intimidate you, but luckily, knowing you for a while now, I definitely know you will not be intimidated, I know this will only embolden you, and I know you also have new plans, and uh, you also have a new show that you're going to be working on, can you update us on what's next for you? Yeah, I mean, it certainly won't intimidate me, in fact, I, I would love to see him again. In D.C., there's politicians running around. It's absurd. Uh, I won't be going into the Capitol building anymore to do it, but I mean, they're everywhere, so you can find out where these people are and talk to them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to also clarify one point. He also, the guy who called uh, RT said that I could be charged with harassment as well. That was another charge that they were throwing out there kind of blanketly without any foundation whatsoever. But coming up on RT, you know, I haven't been anchoring for the last two weeks, and I won't be all of August because I'm preparing to take over the Alona show. But I'm not going to take over her show. I'm going to make my whole a whole new show undercutting the left-right paradigm, corporate top-down media establishment where I'm talking about Big Brother Watch, surveillance issues, government expansion. I'm talking about things that are censored in the mainstream media, back page, distorted. And also talking about heroes and highlighting citizen journalists like Luke, um, highlighting grassroots activists, people who are out there doing awesome things that need to be highlighted and that are not given enough exposure, and also highlighting the villains, uh, the corporate CEOs and the politicians that are doing really messed up stuff. So kind of putting them on the spotlight. And uh, that's the idea for the show right now, so stay tuned for that. Well, if you need me to question Rand Paul, I could definitely do it. And that matter of fact, I will do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, for your show or for not, but I want to congratulate you on your new show. I hope people will tune in. Check out Abby on Twitter, at Abby Martin. You're an amazing human being. Keep up the great work, and I'm very happy to see you not afraid, not intimidated, emboldened, and only strengthened by this attack. It will not stop us. The more you try to stop us, the more we grow, the more unstoppable we become. Hey, Rand. Uh Abby Martin from Media Roots, I just wanted to ask you one quick question. Um, you know, your endorsement for Mitt Romney, people have a lot of questions about it. Anything else we didn't get into that you want to get into, Abby? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, when the corporate media doesn't ask these questions, then who else can? And when people say this is ambush journalism, that's unfounded as well because people are like, oh, how come you couldn't get a meeting with him? He said that he'd have a meeting with you. They don't have meetings with people who are not already totally funded by the top-down establishment. I mean, that just doesn't happen. So sometimes they need to be confronted and about legitimate things. I mean, that's just the way it has to happen. Um, and yeah, just, just once again, you know, the people who say, get an appointment, this is ridiculous, why would he answer you and you're confirmed, da, da, da. Well, he was happy to talk to Luke before about Bilderberg, you know, before he was in the establishment. Yeah, he talked yeah. about how bad the Bilderberg group is, how they want a world government, how we need an audit of uh, Goldman Sachs. But then when I was talking to him, uh, it, was, it was just complete silence, which made the video very awkward. I'm just trying to get answers, and that's why I'm here talking to you, and that's why I'm persistent the way I am. I know you can hear me. <laughs> and he didn't say a single word at all. I know you're trying to ignore me, but the video will play for itself. It will be on YouTube. Nothing. We could have explained everything to our audience. They're only going to have more questions about you, Mr. Rand, and you're only hurting yourself by not answering the question at all. Before you became senator, you talked about the Bilderberg Group and auditing Goldman Sachs. Right now, you're supporting Romney. A lot of your supporters are let down. And I'm let down by your reaction. Which uh, I think pretty much made the video as popular as it, as it is because of that. Because of that awkward kind of silence that, that, uh, that we, we went through there. And I did try many times when I first started covering the Senate and Congress. Uh, I tried to get it little sit-down interviews and I called them ahead of times and after 30 failed attempts and 30 failed responses this is the only way to really get answers and we're also going to be releasing another video this week showing me being very polite to a politician asking him for an interview and him just walking away and coming in and going in his car and not talking to anything so the only way to really get answers is not from the corporate mainstream media is to go out there and to ask the damn questions so that's the only way don't ask for permission ask for the truth and ask for accountability that's the only way you could really do it, and that's the only way to be independent fully. And these people work for us. These people, we pay their salary. I mean, they, they are public servants to the people. So if we want answers of why they do shady stuff and are endorsing warmongers who want to invade Iran and start World War III, I mean, we have the right to do that. Yeah, we have the, at least the right to question them on... Uh, their abuse of authority and their uh, horrible actions and and it's it, you know the free press and and pretty much is is what is the most important thing in this country and we don't have one and that's why we're living in the world we're living in now and I applaud people like yourself Abby and other brave independent journalists out there who are willing to take the risk who are willing to face arrest persecution for just asking the right questions and I appreciate your guts and I know you're going to continue on an amazing journey. You've got a great career ahead of you and uh, full speed ahead. Thank you for everything you do.